tomorrow for the book is the journey out of the body it is october the 31st 2023 and it's freaking 27 degrees it's colder now Oof. And I haven't uh, weatherproofed my place and put like uh, all the storm windows up and that, so. Because it's only October the 31st. Uh, good news is I got my first 8,000 words typed out of my book that I'm writing. <clears throat> For whatever it's worth. And. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of synchronicity going on. That's for sure. Pretty cool stuff. Makes one scratch one's head. Right now the separation process. Chapter 17. After you have achieved the state of vibration. And some control of your state of relaxation. One additional factor must be considered. It is probable that you have already obtained it since it is ordinarily a product of the previous exercises. However, it should be emphasized. This fact is thought control. In the state of vibration, you are apparently subject to every thought, both willful and involuntarily. Involuntary, excuse me. That crosses your mind. Thus, you must be as close to no thought or single thought concentration as possible. If any, if you, if one stray idea passes through your mind, you respond instantly and sometimes in an undesirable manner. I suspect that one is never completely free of such misdirection. At least I have not been, which may account for the many inexplicable trips to places and people. I do not know. They seem to bring triggered. They seem to be triggered by thoughts or ideas I didn't realize I had below the conscious level. The only approach is to do the best you can. With this in mind, the first practices of disassociating the se second from the physical body should be a lim limited in time and action. What follows is designed basically as a familiarization or orientation technique which should permit an approach to disassociation without fear of or concern. The Reese of Extremities this serves to acquaint you with the sensation of the second body without fall commitment. After relaxation and creation of the vibration state, work with either your right or left hand and arm one at a time. This is important as it will be your first affirmation of the reality of the second. With one hand, reach for any object, floor, wall, door, or whatever, that you remember is being beyond the reach of your physical arm. Reach for the object. Make the reaching process neither upward nor downward, but out in the direction your arm is pointing. Reach as if you were stretching your arm not raising or lowering it. The vibration is simply to reach out with the hand and arm in the same manner with no special object in mind. Often this method is better as you then have no preconceived idea of what you will feel. When you reach out in this fashion and feeling nothing
push your hand a little further. Keep pushing gently as if stretching your arm until your hand encounters some material object. If the vibration pattern is in effect, it will work and your hand will eventually feel or touch something. When it does, examine your sense of touch, the physical details of the object. Feel for any cracks, grooves, or unusual details which you will later be able to identify. At this point, nothing will seem unusual. Your sensory mechanisms will tell you that you are touching the object with your physical hand. Here and then is your first test. After acquainting yourself with the object with your outstretched hand, straighten out your hand and push against the object with your fingertips. You will encounter resistance at first. Push a little harder and gently overcome the resistance you feel. At this point, your hand will seem to go right through the object. Keep pushing until your hand is completely through the object and meets some other physical object. Identify that second object by touch, then carefully withdraw your hand and back through the first object and slowly back to normal so that it feels as if it were it, if it, it is where it belongs. With this, decrease the vibrations. The best way to do this is slowly to attempt to move the physical body. Think of the physical body and open your physical eyes. Bring back your physical senses deliberately. Once the vibrations have faded away completely, lie still for a few minutes for full or complete and complete return. Then get up and make a notation of the object which you felt, locating it relative to the position of your hand and arm when you were lying down. Note the details of both the first and second objects which you felt. Having done this, compare your description with the actual first object. Make special note of small details which you could not have seen f from a distance. Physically feel the object to compare it with what you felt under the vibrations. Examine the second object in the same manner. You may not have been consciously aware of it, of its presence or position prior to the experiment. This too is important. Test the line of direction from the place where your physical hand lay through the first object up to the second. It is a straight line. Check your results. Was the first object you touched physically located at a distance it would have been absolutely impossible to reach without physical movement? Did the details of the object, especially in especially the minute details, coincide with the notes you have made. Make the same comparison for the second object. If your answers are affirmative, you have had your first success. If the facts do not check out, try again, under, try again another day. Almost without qualification, if you have produced the vibrational state, you can perform this exercise. You can also practice the following uh, quick, e quick, quite easily. After producing the vibrational state, lying on your back, arms either at your sides or on your chest, gently lift your arms without looking at them, and touch your fingers together. Do this uh, quite casually, abstractly, and remember the sensory results. Once you have Clasp your hands above your chest. Look at the first. Look at them first with your closed eyes. If you have moved easily enough, you will see both physical and non-physical arms. Your physical arms will be at rest at your sides and upon your chest. The sensory impressions will be with the non-physical arms 
and hands above your physical bo uh, body. You should test this phenomenon as many times as you wish, however, however you desire. Prove to yourself that you are moving not your physical arms but something else. Do it by whatever means are necessary to give you full assurance of this reality. It is important always to return your non-physical arms to full conjunction with your physical counterparts before shutting off the vibration state. Although there may be no severe after effect, if this is not done, I think it best not to find out in the early stages. Disassociation Technique The simplest method to use in separating from the physical is the lift out process procedure excuse me the intent here is not to travel to far off places but to get acquainted with the sensation in your own room with familiar surroundings the reason for this is that the first true experience will then be examined and explored with identifiable points of reference in order to assist in this orientation and it is best that these first complete dissociation exercises be conducted during daylight test yourself test test for yourself your needs in regard to the amount of light in the room avoid using any electric light if possible to establish the condition, achieve the vibrational state, and maintain complete control of your thought processes. You are going to stay only in the confines of your familiar room. Think of getting lighter, of floating upward, of how nice it would be to float upward. Be sure to think how nice it would be as the subjective associated thought is more is most important you want to do this because it is something you will respond to emotionally you react even before the act in anticipation if you continue to hold only these thoughts you will disassociate and float gently upward from your physical you may not achieve it at first or the second, but quite, but quite surely, if you have accomplished the preceding exercises, you will achieve it. A second method is the rotation technique, which has been mentioned elsewhere. Under the same prescribed conditions, slowly try to turn over, just as if you were turning over in bed to be more comfortable. Make no attempt to help yourself rotate with either arms or legs. Start turning by twisting the top of your body, your head and your shoulders first. By all means move slowly, exerting gently but firm pressure. If you do not, you may become loose and actually spin like a log rolling in water before you can alter the pressure. Such action is disconcerting only because you may lose all orientation and be forced to find your way back carefully in rotation conjuncture. The ease with which you begin to turn with no friction or, or sense of weight will inform you that you have begun to succeed in disassociating. As this happens, turn slowly until you feel that you have moved 180 degrees, i.e. face to face with your physical body. It is uncanny how you will recognize this position. This 180 degree about face is merely two 90 degree turns without orientation. It is easy to sense. Once you are in the 180 degree position, stop the rotation merely by thinking of doing so without hesitation. Think of 
uh, uh, floating, uh, floating upward, uh, backing, backing up away from the physical body. Again, if you have reached the vibrational state successfully, this method will surely bring results. Of the two separation techniques, the first should be tried before the second. Then after both have been examined and tested, the one that seems easiest to you should be utilized. Local experiments and familiarizations. Once you have succeeded in the separation process, it is most important for you own objective con continuity that you remain in complete control. The only possible way to do this seems to be by staying close to the physical in the early stages. Whatever you may feel emotionally, keep in close proximity to the physical. The uh, admonition is made not because of any known danger, but so that you will maintain a step-by-step -step familiarity and thus perceive for yourself exactly what is taking place. Wild uncontrolled trips at this stage may well produce uncomfortable situations and conditions that will force you to re relearn much of what you have already achieved. The process of mental acclimation will be different from any you have ever consciously experienced. The gradual adaptation will, gent will greatly enhance your peace of mind and confidence. At this point, the principal exercise is to return. Keep your separa separation distance no more than three feet away. Hovering over the physical, do not make any attempt at this time to move laterally or further up. How do you know how far away you are? Again, this is something you sense. Your vision is your vision now is zero. You have conditioned uh, yourself not to open your eyes and let them remain closed for the moment. Stay close to the physical. The mental concept of this will keep you in proper range. For the next three to four exercises, do nothing but practice getting out and returning to the physical. To return under these conditions, merely think yourself back into the physical. You will return. If you have used the first method of separation, their reintegration is relatively simple. When you are back in exact alignment, you will be able to move any portion of the physical body and, react, and reactivate any or all of your physical senses. Each time you return, open your physical eyes and physically sit up so that you know, so that you, know you are completely back together. This is to ensure orientation. And to, uh, I guess you should put it, ah, uh, okay. It's a, an assure the orientation to install confidence that you can return at all. And most important, to assure you of continued contact with the material world in which you are not all belong, which you now belong, in which you are, in which you now belong. Whatever you believe, this reassurance is most necessary. If you have applied the rotation method, move slowly back towards the physical. Again, think uh, again by thinking of it. And when you feel you have made complete contact, start your rotation back 180 degrees to the conjunction with the physical. It seems to make no difference whether you continue the circle rotation or reverse and, re and turn back in a motion opposite to that which helped you release. In both techniques, there seems to be a slight click-like jerk when you are again in conjunction with the physical. An exact description of this sensation is quite difficult. But you will recognize it. Always wait a few moments before sitting up after you 
have returned primarily to avoid any possible uneasiness. Give yourself some time to readjust to the physical environment. The physical act of sitting up provides evidence of continuity in a demonstrable form. You will know that you can consciously, willfully act in a physical movement interspersed with experiments in the non-physical environment and retain conscious awareness throughout the process. You will have completed the cycle when you are able to separate, separate, return to the physical, and sit up and note the time. Go back to the separation process and return to the physical a second time, all without losing uh, loss of conscious continuity. The notation of the clock reading will help this. The next step in the familiarization is to separate to a slightly further distance, applying the same procedures. Any distance up, any, up to 10 feet will do. Always keep mental concentration on a single purpose without stray thought patterns, especially in uh, these extended exercises. After you have become accustomed to the feeling of being more apart, mentally tell yourself that you can see. Do not think of the act of opening your eyes, as this may well transmit you to the physical and diminish the vibrational state. Instead, think of seeing that you can see and you will see. There will be no sensation of eye mo opening. The blackness will just disappear suddenly. At first your seeing may be dim, as if in half light, indistinct or more uh, myopic. It is not known at present why this is so, but with use your vision will become more sharp. The first sight of your physical body lying below you should not be unnerving if you have applied the previous exercises. After you are satisfied that it is you lying there, visually examine the room from the perspective of your position. Mentally move slightly in one direction or another, slowly and never violently. Move your arms and legs to reassure yourself that you're mobile. Roll around and covert, covert in a new element if you wish, always staying within the prescribed range of the physical. At this stage, you may be filled with strong desires which can be almost overwhelming. This is the greatest problem you may face at the moment. These desires appearing unannounced and unexpectedly are subjective and emotional and can easily submerge the deduct deductive reasoning position you have built up so carefully. The most important clue is to understand that they must not be labeled evil or wrong. They simply exist, and you must learn to cope with them. The rule is do not deny the existence of these desires. Recognize them as a deep, integral part of you that cannot be thought away. Until you, you do this, you will be unable to control them. These desires include freedom to reveal to revel in the release from physical limitations and gravitational effects. Sexual contact, first with a loved one and then at a strictly sens sensory level. Religious ecstasy, varying based upon the intensity of earlier life conditioning and others that may orient in unusual environmental experiences of the individual. The belief is held are, is that everyone will have these subjective desires despite the most stringent discipline and self-analysis. 
what we speak of are those elements far below surface consciousness that comprise your own fundamental character and personality. As has been explained earlier, these elements m emerge because you are no longer just a con conscious intellectual self. You are perhaps for the first time an entirety. Every part of you will be hard for, f from Well, every, every part of you will be heard from and must be considered in any action you take. The trick is to keep the conscious reasoning you, the one most uh, cognizant, cognizant of the physical world, in a dominant position. It isn't easy. Therefore, you will run into problems if you attempt to if you attempt a denial of self instead you must accept these some sometimes surprising drives for what they are a part of you go on about your business you cannot eliminate them but you can set them aside for a moment offer the promise of further fulfillment and you will have no resistance these needs can under can understand uh, derivation as they have been subjected to it for as long as you have lived. Uh, <clears throat> in the sense that derivation is diversion. So these needs can understand diversion as they have been subjected to it for as long as you have, as you have lived. When you have reasonably dealt with these other parts of you and have demonstrated this to yourself to your satisfaction five or seven times in a near separation condition in the same room at close vicinity you are ready for more distant and specific voyages all of the foregoing per, uh, presumes that you have overcome most of the fear you have encountered up to this stage. If you have not, repeat the exercises which produce f fear until familiarity washes it away. Infallible return signal. As noted, the fear of being unable to re-enter re the physical is a basic deterrent to leaving the body. In my early experimentation I encountered this problem many times happily a solution was found whenever this difficulty presented itself a after careful analysis of hundreds of tests an infallible technique was evolved the only guarantee that can be given is that it has continued to work for me first if you have difficulty do not pr do not panic Above all, keep your rational thought processes dominant. Terror only aggravates the situation. Internalize this simple formula and call upon it to return to the physical from where, wherever you are. Think of your physical body. Mentally begin to move some part of your physical body and move a finger or toe. Physically take a deep, deliberate breath of air. Reactive. Reactivate your five physical senses or any one of them. Move your jaw, swallow, or move your tongue. Any act that must involve physical motion or use of physical energy will work. If one doesn't immediately take effect, Try another. Without questions, some such thought action will bring you back into the physical. It is merely a question of which one works best for you. When this technique is applied, return is virtually immediate. It is an automatic direction finder and rocket blast combined. Reintegration seems to be 
instantaneously when this is used. However, this immediate return method eliminates your power of choice or decision. Once it is put into effect, you cannot stop it. You will return to the physical without any opportunity to know what is happening and how it is taking place. This, thus, it should be thought of as an emergency reverb measure rather than a consistent step in your methodology. Under ordinary conditions, you should think of or feel the direction and location of your physical body. Then, with no urgency and in a calm and willful manner, start to return the mechanics of movement. Now that you are now that you have set up the proper controls, including the emergency return signal, you are ready for the most momentous step of all: to go to a distant point and return. It is definitely not advisable deliberately to attempt this exercise before you have completed all the previous tests and are at ease with them. It is a question possible, it is quite possible that you ha may have inadvertently gone to a distant point during the early stages. If this is the case, you can recognize the importance of following the procedure. First, set your aiming position. Return. Remember the rule. You must go to a person and not to a place. It may be possible to achieve the latter if you have deep emotional attachment to the locale, but the experiments to date have shown little success along this line. This, of course, may be due to the personality of, of the writer. Select the person living whom you desire to visit. Choose someone who, someone you know quite well. Do not inform this person that you are making the test. This is most important. So as to rule out any suggestion of his or her part. Make this selection before you enter the vibrational state, before you start your relaxation process. And, start your, and before you start your relaxation process. Establish relaxation and the vibrational state. Use your chosen method to separate. Move away to near distance six seven feet from the physical with your vision still and blackness cautiously think of the person whom you plan to visit think not only of the name but of the personality and character of the person do not try to visualize a physical being but it is the reflection of the inner person that will attract you rather than the the I says it's the reflection of the inner person that will attract you rather than the physical attributes. As you think in this pattern, turn yourself around slowly in a 360 degree rotation. Somewhere in this circuit, you will feel the right direction. It is an intuitive thing, a sureness that attracts you like a gentle magnet. Even so, you can check for vibrations. Go past this point in your, in your turn and come back to it again. Again, you will sense it very strongly. Stop facing this direction. Think that you have vision and begin to see. To give yourself motion towards your destination, employ a total second body version of the stretch which you practice in your first exercise with hand and arm. The easiest method is to place your non-physical arms over your head, thumbs latched together like a diver about to plunge into water. <clears throat> with your arms in this position, think of the person you wish to visit Stretch your body in that direction. 
You may move fast or slowly depending upon the effort of this stretching action. The harder you stretch, the faster you go. At your destination, you will automatically stop stretching without realizing it. To return, apply a similar method. Think of your physical body. Reach out and stretch, and you will return promptly. Usually no more is required than this. There is some speculation regarding the necessity of keeping your arms in the diver's position. Originally, it was assumed that this stance would break a path or ward off any encountered objects with your hands rather than your rather than the head. It does help create the stretching action be better than keeping the arms at the sides. There you have it. The foregoing may seem ridiculous, but it is not intended to. <clears throat> it may appear no better than the magic formula of the Middle Ages. To date, there are no explanations of why this technique works. Perhaps in the years to come, interested and curious physicists, chemists, and neurologists, and other scientists will develop workable theories to fit the action. If enough people undertake to examine it, it empirically, Perhaps a new science will result. In the meantime, the boundaries can disappear for you, too, if you have courage and patience. The only way you can ex- uh, can accept and know this extended reality is to experience it yourself. Good luck. And that is the end of chapter 17. Once again, of Journeys Out of the Body by Robert A. Monroe. And we'll get into chapter 18 next. Uh, I did some double chapters, and I might do another double chapter. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, let's get into chapter 18 Analysis of Events. How did all this happen? Was there some avenue or approach that made sense? The best answer seemed to lie in data analysis. This precluded use of of the underground. The only area that considered or accepted my problem as something beyond hallucination, since much of the underground data dealt princip- principally in vague generalities, I wanted specifics. I reasoned that there must be some way to organize the conflicting data I was accumulating, so I began to extrapla- extra extrapolate sound possibilities and probabilities from what was known. The accepted method is to keep one foot in the light and and on solid rock as you step cautiously onto dark shifting grounds. The unknown data were sequence of events, symptoms and results. The sum of my experience and the experimentation fell easily into four chronological stages. Preliminary stage. This includes all events and activities prior to the symptoms of solar uh, solar plex cramp described earlier. Early life patterns disclose two instances of unexplained paradoxes that seemed relevant to this research. First incident occurred when I was eight years old. I reported to my parents a dream in which I sat in a room 
paneled in red brown wood. In one corner was a cabinet from which came music and voices, which looked much like a, a Victrola. Victor in the front of the cabinet was a window, and there were moving pictures in the window. The voices from the cabinet matched what people in the window seemed to be saying. It was like the moving pictures shown at school, except that people's words were heard rather than spelled out on the screen. Also, the moving picture in the cabinet was colored just as the people and things really were. Thirty years later, I sat in a I sat in a mahogany panel room and watched color television for the first time. As best as I can recall, I had never seen any color motion pictures at the age when the dream took place. The second unusual event happened at the high school level at about age 15. On a given Friday night I had been looking forward expectantly to a party the next night. I had estimated that my cash requirements for the coming event were two dollars. The problem was to find a source for two dollars before Saturday night. <clears throat> there had been no work available during the week to earn the money. For one reason or another, my parents had been exhausted and as a resource. No prospect for work on Saturday was in sight. I went to bed Friday night worrying over the, this immediate problem. Upon awakening Saturday morning, I had an immediate vivid connection to two dollars. I had an immediate vivid conviction that two dollars were under an old plank <coughs> lying outside on the ground beside the house. I knew of the existence of the plank as it had been there for some time. However, I dismissed the idea as a wishful dream and went down to breakfast. After eating, still preoccupied with the dire financial problem, I thought again of the board and then two dollars under it. Idly in order to dismiss the idea, I went outside and around the house where the plank lay on the ground. I looked un it looked undisturbed, half covered with dirt and leaves. I was impossible that someone could have inadvertently lost some money and placed it under the, bo the, the board. Still, as long as I was there, it wouldn't hurt to look just to get rid of the compulsion. <clears throat> I pulled at the plank and raised it upward and there were th hundreds of ants and bugs on the damp dirt underneath, running frantically all directions. Also the wet earth, uh, also on the wet earth and the center of the area where the board had lain were two folded crisp dry one dollar bills. I did not stop to consider how the money happened to be under the board. I made no mention of the incident at the time except to a friend. I was too concerned that someone might claim the money. The problem for the night was solved. The incident had been forgotten completely until recalled under the personal histor history research. There was nothing more. No great traumas, just a basic American upbringing and a scholastic family. In view of the fact that it was a mental problem, psychiatry seems to be the answer. Still no outward evidence of strong repressions, compulsions, anxieties, and or phobias which normally show up in mental illness could be found. Close examination of events leading up to the first out-of-body symptom, the severe cramps, brings to light several factors which deserve consideration. 
In the year immediately preceding the first incident, there was only one relatively unusual physiological change. During that year, I had seven lower teeth capped in a rather lengthy dental procedure. This was ex examined in detail in relation to the latter symptom of tuning the second state condition by movements of the jaw. It is possible that the bits of assorted metal comprising part, co comprising part of the tooth caps fabrications acted electrically or in some other fashion on the brain. This still remains an unexplored possibility. Physicists physiologists and electronic specialists have no theory relating to this. Proper research could prove or disprove the hypothesis. There are hundreds of thousands of people walking around with bits of metal uh, in their teeth. Other such instances have been reported. A survey might prove interesting. There were no other uh, physiological changes significant enough to be recalled uh, consciously. The only above ordinary nutritional factor was that a vitamin intake of a vitamin intake. Since my wife believes strongly in nutrition, daily doses of vitamin A, B, and complex C and E, plus mineral tablets, had been a norm norm for several years. Again, a cumulative effect could have been the cause, but no reports or research studies indicated any factors resembling the second state. Other than this, normal diet was the rule, with no major changes for five years at least. At the psychological and physical activity levels, there is much to be noted. It is quite conceivable that the causes of the phenomena lie here. The first consideration might be termed the anesthesia episode, which took place some six months prior to the first symptoms. The beginning came when I noticed an unusual heady effect from the fumes of the of a gallon can of contact cement. I was inhaling a cubby coal, a cubby hole desktop. Oh, I was installing a cubby hole desktop in the wall of a bedroom at home when I became aware of the sensation. The can clearly stated on the lid that the cement could or should be should be used in well ventilated areas. I, I correctly assume that this was a fire hazard warning from the manufacturers. The sensation remained reminded me of the strange effect I had experienced in the past just as I was going under from anesthesia. A curious I examined with the effect of the fumes a, a, a number of times in the following months month with very significant results upon learning that the fuming agents w were talu to, uh, talu ah, talu a common commercial hydrocarbon detergent and acetone once used in as, a, as an anesthetic. I made several experiments with the subjective effects of light anesthesia utilizing a less volatile and relatively safe inhalant, trialing. In retrospect, of those who have undertaken the LSD experience, intensely vital and not at all unpleasant, the effects may well have triggered an inner desire or need to experience 
need for experiences beyond those that had been to that date. Reluctantly, I stopped the experiments as there seemed inherent dangers of physiological side effects if they were continued. Although I had set up rigid controls, there was no certainty that they would always work. However, I did find some interesting facts about anesthesia to satisfy my curiosity. In Ireland, it seems either ether was sold by the spoonful by peddlers who ladled it out of a street side out of, out of out, ladled it out at street side each morning. <clears throat> in early days, in the early days, medical students often had ether uh, part parties, much like the parties of the black market LSD users today. Doctors have reported that ether addiction has been quite common through the years. Captains of gasoline tankers have problems with seagoing versions of Windigo. When signed as a crew, these men appear completely normal until they are found unconscious alongside a, a cargo vent. I understand that they are labeled sniffers. Further, I learn the relationship between alcohol and other anesthetics. Anesthetics. Any anesthetic produces a trail from consciousness to unconscious state beyond which is death. The job of the anesthesis is to put down or place the patient in a deep unconscious state as quickly as possible, avoiding any violent intermediate condition which is the area I evidently explored. The technique then is to hold the unconscious patient just above death. The major advantage of ether when it was first introduced was that it had fewer possible side effects than alcohol and offered greater control of the degree of unconsciousness. The period of consciousness following administration was quite short and the unconscious state was quite extended before before the terminal point death was reached. The period of consciousness following the administration of alcohol, on the other hand, is quite long. When deep unconsciousness is reached, the distance to the terminal point is much shorter. The margin, margin is so narrow that continued administration of alcohol to a patient after he has passed out can cause death. Another fact I discovered is that archaeological and geo geological students of the sites of several ancient Greek and Egyptian temples of worship were, where many visions and miracles took place had indicated the probable escape of underground gases, including nitrogen oxide, at and around the particular spot sometime in the past. Nitrogen oxide is one of the present day anesthetics, anesthetics odorless and tasteless. Some three months after this drug experiment, which by then was almost forgotten, I developed an interest in the possibilities of data learning during sleep and I do not know what brought about this interest. Perhaps it was an outgrowth of an earlier academic environment coupled with my immediate observation of the teaching methods applied in the primary grades to my own children. To explore the potential 
of this interest, I made some studies of past and present concepts of the walking unconscious mind. There was supporting evidence that the unconscious uh, recorded all sensory input data while awake and asleep. The problem was to introduce intelligent and organized data during sleep and to write conscious recall when desired. The limited formal research material available showed contradictory conclusions. Simple reading of data to a sleeping subject produced only fragmentary and erratic results. No comparative studies between induction during sleep delta sleep during deep delta sleep and the dreaming state now term REM sleep had been made nor had any attempt been made to create deliberately a receptive sleep state with a Pavlovian type of condition reflex induced to bring recall at will to carry up this research in a convenient manner, I made auto-hypnotic sound recordings to test various approaches to a workable technique. This seemed to be the first logical step, as results had been obtained along similar lines, utilizing hypnotic sleep instead of natural sleep state. The reason for the use of tape recordings was to depersonalize the technique and to ensure identical tests among different subjects. The tapes were designed for use in a booth isolated from light and sound. The tapes used were deliberately simple in content. There was a period of induction to create hypnotic sleep. Following this, a series of direction suggestion units were incorporated into the continuing pattern. These varied according to the test and the results desired. Data learning, for example, was confined to uh, multiplication tables from 20 to 24 and to Spanish and French vocabulary and idiomatic phrases. These were always accompanied by suggestion of full and complete memory and by post-hypnotic suggestion that recall could be obtained in the conscious state by a mental physical cue, such as thinking of the number 555, 555, and tapping fingers on a table five times simultaneously. Each induction tape recording also included a suggestion that the subject would improve both physically and mentally. This affirmation was somewhat more than a generality. No details were suggested as to how this improvement would take place. Yet each functional area of the body, the nervous, the circulatory, the glandular, and digestive systems, were to be completely normal according to the instructions given to the subject. Both health and recall su suggestions then were uh, reinforced with each induction or use of the tape. The light of latter incidences, and the light of latter incidences, this may have been important. Each experimental tape was carefully annotated with every spoken word identically following a prepared script and routine. The tapes closed uh, with a pattern to bring the subject back to complete and normal wakefulness. Suggestion here was extremely simple and effective with no elaborate words that might be misinterpreted by the subject. The tapes were played to about 11 subjects ranging in age from 7 to 50. The 
The results implied a definite potential value with some improvement in techniques. It must be stated here that I applied the tapes experimentally first and most frequently to myself. This quite naturally brought them into the greatest area of suspicion in relation to the out-of-body experimentation. All the tapes have been examined word by word, sound by sound, at low back backroom level for cues uh, uh, to a possible ladder effect. No clues seemed evident. Uh, did I say cues? Uh, background levels of clues to a possible ladder effect. No clues seemed evident. Yet, the suspicion remains. Such an experimentation termed with a, terminated with the appearance of the first symptom. Uh, beginning stage, September 1958 through July 1959, and the expectation of some correlation between effects, events, characteristics, theories, and conclusions, a sorting process was investigated, was in instigated, excuse me, investigated, was instigated. It soon became evident that three stages had been taken place within this period. There may be additional stages beyond the three, but these remain unknown. Both the beginning and the cutoff point of the beginning stage are fairly clear. Effects. The first unexplained effect was the cramp and cons constriction as reported earlier. Several weeks later, this was followed by the sensation of a ray from the north with r resultant uh, <clears throat> catalepsy, catalepsy. Uh, cause, uh, cautious experimentation brought the, the, the discernment of the vibration state and I know what that word means and I forgot it so I'm going to look it up again Let's do it, so we don't just assume. Catalepsy. I didn't know why all that happened. I'm always typing things wrong. Catal Catalepsy. Catalepsy, a medical condition. Oh, uh, guys, once again, characterized by trance or seizure, with loss of sensation and consciousness, accompanied by rigidity of the body. Of course, catalepsy. Catalepsy. I forget so much. Well, this is not good. What happened to page 22, 2020, 220? Please don't forget heavy me all the way back. There it is. Oops. Oh, look at that size. Okay. This sensory impression was later discovered to be reported consistently and the experiences of spiritualists, occultists, and others in the late 19th century. It still is referred to casually in much underground talk. The vibrational sensory effect was the single consistent symptom. 
Throughout the beginning stage, however, it appeared to be evolutionary. Uh, evol evolutionary. The early vibrations seemed to be rough, sometimes accompanied by a, a visual image of a localized ring of electrical sparks. The frequency <clears throat> was an, on the order of 10 cycles per second, according to uh, the vi to visual clock timing. At the conclusion of the beginning stage, the frequency had increased to approximately 18 p cps with much less discomfort to the physical body. Uh, this effect was induced willfully some 59% of the time in the latter portion of the period. No. No. It's not characters per second. It's not children. The children protective services. I guess it's been better. Whatever. I not which. Okay. <clears throat> The second effect was the awareness of a high-pitched hiss heard softly yet consistently in the um, aureal centers. Once established, it continued uninterrupted throughout the period. An ear specialist diagnosed this as hearing of the blood through the veins, otherwise hearing was normal. Separation from physical body took place approximately three months into into the period, inadvertently the first in the first instance. Most subsequent instances were induced deliberately. All took place only when the vibration effect was present. And it became easier to create this effect as the period progressed. No other per pronounced or negative or re repetitive effects were observed. Any physical logical results seem to be restful rather than um, enervating or de debilitating. As this stage in, in frequency at, at this stage, in frequent s subsequent physical effects of excitement and stimulation were evident, but not to an extreme degree. These included accelerated pulse rate, uh, precipitation, and sexual response, emotional patterns. For fully half of the period, fears of mental and or physical disability were dominant, dominant. These fears were greatly assuaged by consolation with an examination by medical and psychiatric authorities. The main subject factor, the main subsequent factor was curiosity, tempered by strong undercurrents of anxiety related to undirected and uncharted exploration of, un, of the unknown, possible community and or familiar sensors, and the fear of being unable to return to the physical body. Sequence of experimentation. <clears throat> from the first out-of-body experience, the experiments range from gradual familiarity of local separation 10 feet or less to objective examination through partial separation and finally 
visits into areas of locale, locale 1, present space-time. The methodological, methodological means of inducing the vibrational state were explored, centering chiefly on tape recordings described earlier in methods of producing complete relaxation with full consciousness, the prerequisite for the vibrational state. It was determined that achievement of the vibrational state was relatively simple once the consciousness relaxed, relaxed condition was established. The evidence of oral breathing as a condition was confirmed. Tuning, in quotes, of the vibration, vibrational state by minute movements of the physical jaw proved to be an effective method. It became apparent that separation occurred only during the vibrational state. The technique of separation evolved into a simple, uncluttered thought of up and away. Successive tests indicated that any non-physical movement in the second body was instigated by desire or thought alone. Problems of controlled movement to predetermined location and unhampered immediate return to the physical body remained unsolved. Conclusions. The following conclusions were reached during this period. One, there does exist a second body interspersed or in conjunction with the physical body. Two, the second body cannot move and act independently of the physical body. Three, these movements and actions can be made particularly under, partially under the control of the conscious mind. For some sensory inputs in the body, the second body, register as they do in the physical, others are beyond translation. Five, some movements in the second body occur in identical space-time to that of the physical counterpart. August 59 through September 1962 effects. This period is identified as being with a mild coronary. There was no evidence of a relationship between the experimentation and the illness. The absence of evidence does not necessarily eliminate the possibility. The vibrational state evolved until it was manifest only as a sense of warmth in latter portions of the period. Of period. This change resulted from a gradual speeding up of frequency until signal pulsations were not uh, perceptible. The auditory air hiss Phenomena continue unchanged throughout this period. Separation from the body became less procedural and more natural, with only occasional re-entry problems. The vibrational state was deliberately induced during daylight hours and occurred spontaneously late at night. Apparent physiological effects remained the same, no resulting enervation enervation or uh, debilitation, some stimulation. These were observed most carefully in view of the coronary uh, uh, oculation. Emotional patterns. Early in the period, there was some anxiety about possible physiological effects. The inability to control the experience totally at will contributed to these fears, which lessened considerably by the middle of the period, due principally to the lack of supporting evidence and growing confidence. Still present were concerns relating to return to physical controls and the possibilities of serious errors 
through ignorance and the unknown areas. Sequence of experimentation. Extended visits to Locale 1 became less frequent, to be replaced by initially inadvertent trips to Locale 2. In the latter portion of the period, entry into Locale 3 was discovered and subsequently explored. The intertime state was discovered late in the period. Methodology. Countdown techniques of relaxation were applied in daylight tests. Late at night, borderline sleep states were converted to the now recognizable vibration warmth condition. Oral breathing became an automatic function with some further experiments with jaw tuning. Separation from the physical body via 180 degrees out of phase back away method proved to be the most effective and reliable. Consistent technique of positive return to the physical K recall was tested and put into practice. Conclusions. One, existence of the second body was reaffirmed to local two with specific characteristics different from those of locale one was discovered three the existence of locale three was hypothesized with uh, related characteristics of locale one but in different stages of scientific development human personality survives the transition of death and continues to locale two communication between human beings can take place above the oral level in the waking and sleeping state and or the second state. Six, some or most of human living physical entities separate from the physical body during sleep. The reason for this is not known. Late stage, October 62 through uh, October 70. Experimentation was limited during this period due to due principally to lack of opportunity. Preoccupations with the material affairs took precedence with evolution of uh, previous work as a secondary effort. Effects. Sense of vibration disappeared completely during the period, evolving into warmth and then to an indefinable being. Separation from the physical was possible only in this being state with minimal effort. The only physical effect noted was a slight feeling of disorientation, headiness, and minor discomfort for some nine hours after a particular experiment. No special experiment had been performed and the causes for this are unknown. In the middle of the period, I suffered a, a throm thrombosis hemorrhoid believed attributed to an experience during an experiment some four days prior to the experience, appearance of the symptoms. Symptom. There was no previous medical history of this physical problem. Sleep requirements lessened during the period. However, when sleep appeared necessary, it became imperative to comply with the need. Non-compliance brought physical and mental uh, uh, debil debilitation. As little as five minutes of sleep brought major regeneration. The only other significant effect recorded was the occurrence at two separate times of a complete awareness of nearby location. This was full consciousness at a level where full sensory awareness of physical surroundings was active. Yet the self was, quote, one notch away, end quote. Both the occasions It required a deliberate decision to integrate completely into the physical environment. The effect of the remaining 
in the uh, non one notch way environment is unknown. The air has sound continued. Emotional patterns. The fear found in previous stages were completely dissipated in this period. The most important reason for this was complete confidence in the methods of bringing about an immediate return to the physical when desired. Furthermore, the evolution, the, evalu the evaluation of previous data brought acceptance of the condition into terms of an evolution rather than deterioration. At the same time, minor concerns for continued existence in the physical body began to manifest themselves. Disregard for physical dangers lessened considerably as a result. The reason for this is not known. Sequence of experimentation. No pre-planned sequence was instituted during this during the period due to the uh, Exigency, what the hell? Of other matter. Aha. That's a word. That's a word, I don't know. Exogenetics. Ah, so it's exogen. Let's see. Exigency. 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 An urgent need or demand. Exigency. That's not a word I have never heard before. Or maybe I did, I just never paid attention to it. Ex exigency. 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 Where the hell was I at? Okay, exigency doesn't matter. Thus, experimentation was sporadic and took place only when it was opportune. Several strong evidential visits were made to both Locale 1 and Locale 2. Most visits were to Locale 2, with unspecific results as related to the physical world. Locale 1. Experimentation of strictly scientific grounds began late in the period under controlled laboratory conditions. Methodology. Little attention was given to this area as two principal problems remain unresolved. Unsolved. First problem was the development of deep relaxation techniques, which were obtained with increasing difficulty. Second was the chronic problem of controlling the destination point. Various techniques were applied, all with indeterminate results. The heart of the difficulty lie in the conflicting desires between conscious mind and the superconscious when both are operating at full capacity. In the second state, the superconscious is stronger is the stronger deciding element. Conclusion one while in, in the second body, it is possible to create a physical effect on the physical, on a physically living human entity while the latter is awake. Two, there are unfolding areas of knowledge and concepts completely beyond the comprehension of the conscious mind of the experimenter. We are plugging along. That'll be the end of that reading. And uh, next time I get going, read will be at chapter 19. Statistical classification. We have been reading out of Robert A. Monroe's book, Journeys Out of the Body. For multiple reasons. You're going to try, go all the way, otherwise don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, 
but maybe you'll mind. Breathe.